Sean is 15. He was born with cerebral palsy and epilepsy. You know, there have been a lot of medical problems because of it, but these two hospitalizations that we've had here have been the worst, that have been the scariest. We came close to losing him both times. In December, he got pneumonia, and he got a fairly bad pneumonia. By the time that we got the ambulance to the house, he was pretty unresponsive, and we thought for sure we were gonna lose him this time. And we live in Las Cruces, so both times the hospital in Las Cruces transferred us, asked us where we wanted to go, and you know, we said pretty much take us to Children's, please. The staff, the, the nurses, the doctors, the respiratory therapists, they're an amazing group of people. They're, they, you know, they know their stuff, but not only that, they take good care of him. You know, they, you know, he understands everything. His disability is mostly physical but a lot of people assume it's mental too. And so the staff here, before they do anything to him, will talk to him and let him know. And they try to keep him from being scared and they try to keep us from being scared. But on top of that, they just, they know their stuff. They know their stuff. Sean had to have an NJ tube put in, which is a tube that runs through your nose, down through your stomach and into your intestines so that you can eat without actually putting anything into your stomach. And in 14 years, nobody had ever been able to get one. And when they said they were going to put one in, I told them, you're not going to get it. I actually laughed. And David said, I'll get it. His, his anatomy is a little different. Um, he, uh, he has uh, some curvature in his spine. So that makes it, I guess, a little bit more, more difficult. She says that they have, I don't know, they've had a hard time before. I spent uh, probably a good hour doing it. Having experience with, with children, it kind of allows us to be, we're a little bit more comfortable taking care of taking care of kids. When he said he got it, I didn't believe him until I came and got the x-ray and said, yeah, it's in place. And I was just shocked. When the nursing supervisor asked us if we would nominate anybody for the Daisy Award, I told him I don't want to single one of these people out because they're all incredible. You know, and he said, okay, I understand that, but pick one, please pick one. And so we picked David for that reason. And They actually read a, a kind of, a, uh, I guess, the what, what the family said about, about me. And then they also explained what the, what the Daisy Award was and what it kind of meant. Well, it feels really good, you know? I mean, we come to work every day and we think we're, we try to do something, something good, something positive. And to get feedback, to get feedback like this, it, it feels really good. Like we're, we're, you know, like I guess it kind of matters what, what you're doing. I told my husband the Daisy Award is not properly named because it's cute and flowery and these people are fierce, you know. <laughs> when they need to be fierce, they are fierce. They treat him they treat him gently when they have to and when the need arises, they are in there and they know their stuff. You know, locally I can't think of a more worthy cause. There are there are some really sick kids here. And the fact that we almost lost our son this time. We came very close to losing him. You know, and these people these people brought him back to us. You know, they really did. They brought him back to us and they gave us back his smile. And if there's anything I can say, you know, to encourage you, you're, you're giving parents back their, their hearts. You know, so this would be probably the best, the best use of your, your money is to, to give parents back their hearts.